Hey guys, this is Bharat Waj with Phonoreno.com and this is the Samsung Galaxy S5. Yes, the latest flagship that I have in my hand. You would have seen the unboxing and the camera samples from the Galaxy S5 over at the blog. But uh, today in this video, I'm going to talk about the S5's camera in depth uh, in terms of the interface, in terms of the performance and all the features. I'm going to tell you all that in this camera review of the Samsung Galaxy S5. So let's start with the technical specifications of the Samsung Galaxy S5. We have a 16 megapixel sensor in the camera unit here, which is of the 1 by 2.3 inch type, which is the size. You may have seen that the Sony Xperia Z1, the Z2, the Z1 Compact, and even the Xiaomi E-Life E7 have the same size sensors, but of course in different sensor technologies because Samsung is using its own ISO cell technology in this camera. Yes, that's right. ISO cell means that it's using isolated cells, cells which is pixels, and uh, due to this, the inaccuracies in color are being rectified. So that's the technology's main advantage. But unfortunately, the main disadvantage is that due to the additional layer that isolates each pixel, the pixel size is reduced on a same type, larger type sensor. For example, the Geoni E-Life E7, which has the exact same 1 by 2.3 inch 16 megapixel sensor has a higher pixel size unlike the Samsung Galaxy S5 which is 1.1 micrometer. So despite this uh, disadvantage the Galaxy S5 takes really really good photos and we are going to show you some samples soon. But let's start with the interface. The interface of the Samsung Galaxy S5 is certainly uh, intriguing because of the new user interface style that TouchWiz has. It's completely flat now and gone are the gradients and all the shadows and all that. We still feel that the camera interface could go more flat but this is pretty good enough now. So as you know already uh, the mode buttons, the shutter button, the video shutter button, the gallery and there are five configurable shortcuts on the left side. So you touch to focus and that's the focus ring and it's currently in the auto mode. So first let's go through the modes. You have the auto mode, the beauty, shorten mode. All these are already the same as the ones on the Samsung Galaxy S4. In fact, Samsung has reduced the number of modes because they have opened up the camera APIs which lets you download more stuff or even manage them later. So that's what's installed here and that's the modes. Modes are pretty uh, you know, gimmicky sometimes but uh, now that the Galaxy S5 has less modes, it's uh, pretty cool. And then you have the settings. Over here you have five quick shortcuts and we have uh, the front facing camera toggle here first. The front facing camera as you know, uh, a lot of people have been asking us on various other phones like how the front facing camera is because the selfie generation is here and we can't do anything about it. So in that sense it doesn't have focus like the E7 but it is pretty good and for selfies this is good enough. So that's the front facing camera and then we have a quick access shortcut for the select to focus option. So this is very similar to what HTC does with the One M8 through hardware, but this is software. This uses contrast detection to distinguish between the foreground and the background and blurs it. This does not work very reliably and most of the times it says that it cannot focus on, your, uh, on you and uh, it cannot find out the contrast detection and even if it works, it does not work that well. Here is a sample of selective focus that I took recently which worked after many attempts. So let's uh, switch that off. And this is the video mode which quickly lets you select the uh, types of video uh, that you want to take. For example, you have smooth motion, you have fast motion and slow motion. So these are pretty much the same as what you saw on the Note 3. Smooth motion is 1080p 60fps. Slow motion is 720p 120fps. Yes, it does record slow motion and even 4K resolution which we will show you and uh, you can see the samples later but let's go through the rest of the user interface. This is the HDR toggle which is actually live HDR. When you switch the toggle on it will always show you in the viewfinder the HDR photo. It's live and it's a brilliant achievement uh, using hardware which is uh, pretty awesome and uh, live HDR is something we have not seen on other cameras so this is pretty good. Usually a camera takes time to take HDR photos like for example a couple of seconds but the Samsung Galaxy S5 takes it instantly which is awesome. 
and the SDF photos are really good and we will show you the samples. And uh, here is the settings which has frankly a lot. This is a lot to uh, you know digest for the first time user. So let's start with the picture size here. That's uh, 16 megapixel in terms of resolution. You'll have other options too for 4 is to 3 and 16 by 9. It's a native 16 by 9 sensor so 4 is to 3 will crop the photo. There is burst shots, picture stabilization, face detection and all that. We have the ISO auto which is uh, you know changeable in other modes. There is the metering, tap to take pics, select to focus again. You can drag any of these and replace stuff here and uh, you know that's how you do it. There is the FX, there is the recording mode that I've already added and uh, yeah that's the I had already added that but yeah this is the video resolution part where you can select full HD and 4K and then it, of course if you change the mode that will default itself to whatever resolution it can take and then HDR and all these are uh, general features that you can usually change with uh, the Samsung cameras so pretty nicely done interface we've always uh, seen uh, Samsung implement the interface pretty well and this is a good iteration of the old Samsung interface. So let's talk about the performance. How is the Galaxy S5 like in terms of performance? Well we took the camera for a spin in many conditions and took a lot of photos. We have a lot of photos that we already posted. In case you want to view the full resolution sample you can check out the link below. The link will take you to the blog and you'll have all the full resolution samples. But anyway, here it goes. We started with uh, some daylight samples, so let's take a look at some of them. As you can see from the samples there, the color reproduction is absolutely top notch. And the overall clarity of the photo, the 16 megapixel resolution, the details, all that blends together to produce a brilliant photo in the daylight conditions. It takes great photos and HDR in particular is pretty good, especially when you have uh, a very background light. It means that the objects in the foreground uh, have sun in the background, which makes them look very underexposed. So we took a bunch of photos and here are two of them. First up, without HDR, you can see practically nothing. And then which, uh, with HDR, which you can see a lot of things. So the HDR mode is pretty awesome. And if you're looking at taking photos with a lot of dynamics like uh, shadows and highlights, you will want to use the HDR mode, which is live HDR, as I already told, and it works pretty great. So overall, the performance of the camera in daylight even in HDR, it's pretty awesome. The color reproduction is spot on and we very, very much love the amount of details it produces. One of the really, 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 really good cameras that we have seen in the recent times. And then we move on to macro to test out the bokeh. And we were even more surprised and shocked to see that such creamy bokeh is possible on a phone. Due to the 1 by 2.3 inch sensor, it produces beautiful amount of bokeh. Bokeh is basically the blurred part of the uh, photos in the macro shots. You can see some samples here which all have beautiful bokeh and very good details. So here are the samples. As you saw and like we exactly said the bokeh is spectacular on the Galaxy S5 and of course it has great details as we expected. Now moving on to low light, that's the biggest question that everybody asks these days. How is the low light performance of this camera because Nokia made such a huge deal about it. Unfortunately we are uh, reporting that the low light performance is not up to the mark because the daylight performance was so good that we expected a lot but the low light performance could be a lot better. This is mainly due to the smaller pixel size. Uh, there is a lot of noise 
white noise uh, involved in the photo not color noise thankfully to the uh, iso cell but if you don't mind the noise it takes really really good photos in low light too here are some samples check them out and see what you like Now that's about it for the uh, explanation and you know we, we just showed off all the types of uh, shots that we took with the X5's camera. Stills are pretty awesome. Even in low light you can see that if you don't mind the noise the S5 is pretty good. But of course there is a lack of details and uh, it pretty much can be better in terms of low light. It's not matching up to the expectations of the daylight pictures that we can very well say. Moving on to the important video mode, we found that it has a lot of modes as you saw earlier it has 1080p with 60 fps which is smooth motion and then we have the 120 fps 720p slow motion let's talk about that first here is a video sample taken in 720p 120 fps played back at 30 fps to give you an illusion of uh, the slow motion effect that we uh, saw using the galaxy s5 As you saw with the video sample, there is no audio of course, but uh, the problem is that the details are so soft, too soft rather, and uh, it produced inferior videos when compared to the other phones. For example, the HTC One M8 has better slow motion capabilities and the iPhone 5 is iPhone 5S is definitely the best we have seen. Unfortunately, the Galaxy S5 does not come close in that department. but. One thing the iPhone 5S cannot do is take 4K videos and the Galaxy S5 sure can because the uh, Note 3 sure can with the Snapdragon 800 version but thankfully Samsung has implemented 4K video even in the Exynos version that we have here in the hands. So here is the 4K video sample with live music that we took in San Francisco. Uh, take a look at it yourself and be the your judge. So as you saw from the 4K video sample, the quality is pretty good, but we would say that the bitrate could be a lot better. It currently uh, comes at 47 F uh, Mbps, which is the bitrate, approximately that for most of the videos. And uh, it's not that great in terms of quality. It could be a lot better. It's kind of softer on the details, but still it can resolve a good amount of detail in the 4K resolution. We wish that manufacturers take 4K more seriously and implement it much much better than before. So that's the Galaxy S5's overall performance, the camera performance, that's the camera review for you. Our verdict is that this is easily one of the best uh, cameras out there on Android platform. It rivals all the other cameras in color accuracy and representation. The lens is beautiful, the f2.2 aperture uh, lens is a very very clear and takes really great photos so if you're looking to buy the galaxy s5 and have second thoughts in the camera don't have any second thoughts except for low light because it's pretty awesome in terms of color reproduction and that's all that matters in daylight and hdr is absolutely beautiful so if you're looking to uh, buy the galaxy s5 be sure that the galaxy s5's camera is awesome except for the small compromise in low light also, the video mode works pretty well. It might not be the best 
it definitely needs to improve in 4k as well as slow motion but at least you have a lot of options so that's the camera review our verdict is a definite thumbs up for the galaxy s5 do let us know what you think in the comment section below and don't forget to check out the full resolution camera samples we think you'll like them so check out the links below in the description they'll take you to a blog and you can see all the full resolution camera samples so that's about it for the video do hit the like button if you like this and of course do subscribe to our channel for all kinds of videos including camera reviews thanks for watching and let us know what you think in the comment section below